Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Johnson. This is Thought by Thought Healing. I'm a chronic pain coach. I come at it from a Christian perspective, and I interview experts and also people who have healed by using the mind-body connection. And today I get to interview Ashley. So Ashley and I actually worked together. Um, was it a year and a half ago that we were working together? Is that close to right? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm about a year out from when you set me free, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, kind of phased out. So about a year out almost, so a year and a half out. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for being willing to be vulnerable and share your story with everybody. Well, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a safe place, like I said, here, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it is a safe space, um, which is funny because... Um, that's what we're talking about in all of this recovery is a lot of times that word safe and, mm -hmm. and we are safe. Um, okay. So yeah, so let's, let's, let me just ask you questions. Like I haven't talked to you in a year, which is minus a few messages back and forth. That's about true. Yeah. Uh, tell me, let's start by just introducing yourself where, where you live, who you are, just a little bit about, about who you are. Yeah, so um, my name is Ashley. I am um, 36 and I live in Arizona. I grew up here most of my life and I have a sister and we grew up, um, our parents were separated and we grew up um, being very athletic and uh, we always knew Jesus and God and that was always, I don't even know life without it. So um, we kind of just grew up in that, our little bubble down here in the south of the desert and um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, did you ever live in Washington state? I didn't, but I visit very often. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. your sister's up here, right? Or she, she is. Here? Yeah, okay. she is. Okay. So. Cool. Um, when, okay. So you, when you're looking back on your life mm -hmm. and you, um, now have this mind body connection information, when do you feel like your first mind body symptoms started showing up and what, and what were they? Um, well, the ones like after going through everything kind of retrospect, looking back on my life, I can now notice things of like severe, like stomach issues I dealt with. I can like back in like 10 years ago, um, headaches and, um, different things such as that, which were not unnormal. And so I just dealt with them as like, um, you know, the regular medical profession would and um but like the actual physical pain type stuff didn't happen until like last year when I met you but looking back at my life I think is my life is kind of sprinkled with some mind body stuff that I didn't actually realize with mind body and um in general so um it's it's kind of interesting to go back after going through this and kind of looking back on stuff and being like wow um you just you you look at everything completely different yeah absolutely um, okay. So during that time, were you going to the doctor a lot and trying to figure out what was wrong with you? Or were you just kind of complacent and, and feeling like, okay, I have these headaches and these stomach issues and that's just the way life is. Um, you know, I just learned to deal with them and then they would come and go. And so the, the stomach stuff I dealt with, I saw doctors and specialists and multiple tests and stuff like that. And it was inconclusive. And I just, as a result, it came to the conclusion that it was just stress. And so if I could like I cut out certain foods and that I thought made my stomach hurt or, you know, made my life not as stressful in certain areas or not let stress hit me, then my stomach wasn't as bad. And so I kind of didn't actually have any type of diagnosis or any type of like, here, this is what you need to do to get better. I just kind of like personally took it on myself and be like, okay, well, I'm not getting the answers I need. So I'm just going to take it into my own hands. And this seems to work for me. And I just like, dealt with it, you know, and then the headaches itself yeah. too, just kind of like found whatever um, cured it in the moment, either massages or, you know, uh, sleeping or whatever, like normal things didn't cure it. So just whatever helped me get through to the next like headache or the next stomach ache. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, looking back at that time, did it feel like you were living or just coping or what was, I don't know, how do you, how do you describe that time in your life? Um, you know, I, I didn't know any better. I mean, I think everybody, I don't, 
I don't think that it was uncommon. So it was just like a thing to deal with. And everybody kind of had similar stories. And, you know, maybe it was some other people did have certain things that they needed stuff for. So I don't, my experience with that was like, I, again, I just like took down at myself and I just was like, this is life as we know it. And let's just move forward. And um, that's pretty much how I dealt with it. So I hear your dog in the background. Yeah, she, she gets a little vocal sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so um, at that point in time, tell me about how you discovered the mind-body connection or or what brought you to a place where you weren't just going to live like this. You were going to pursue something different. Well, I don't think the mind, and I, I want to get back, like I, I had those stomach aches and headaches and stuff, and that was stuff of the past, but like what really brought me to like the mind-body stuff is like how, a year ago is when I had severe symptoms of like my back burning of my back up and down my spine i had like this vibration that would like um it was weird it was like you know like the little massage there guns like yeah kind of shaking would happen inside my chest or like to the, the tingling of my lips and my hands and my my feet and i think that that is what pushed me to like like this can't go on like this like i was like like could not do anything else and so um the other stuff I learned how to deal with it at this point, this was something I could not deal with anymore. And um, I uh, I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't know what's happening, but this isn't it. And I don't want to be here, not in a suicidal like thoughts or anything like that. But it was like I'd wake up in the morning having these intense like sensations that I couldn't even do life. And so um, I just remember being like, uh this isn't it and i don't want to be here if this is it but i knew deep down i had a good good father and he wouldn't keep me here and so that kind of like helped me kind of move forward but i definitely had those thoughts yeah. when i had those sensations yeah i i understand that the difference between suicidal thoughts and just like i i i don't want to live this life like this mm -hmm. um, but that's really encouraging that you you had that hope like god's not going to leave me here Mm -hmm. um, that's powerful um, to to have that hope and that trust. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, and to get back to your question with the neuroscience, neuro, like I don't know if it was a seed that was planted that God planted, but I remember year like a few years ago, just hearing like a lot about neuroscience and like like neural pathways and like. I didn't know much about it, but I knew I was very intrigued by it. I knew I remember hearing like either online or podcasts or reading like book titles and not knowing quite what it meant, but I knew that I found it very interesting. And so I remember when our first conversations and you started using those terminologies, I was like, I don't really understand it, but I know prior to this, I'm very intrigued. So it was something that was an easy, easy for me to get my head around. And that was actually like, let's go head first into it. Like, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so the transition of kind of something you were already interested in now mm -hmm. applying to you was was easy to get on board with yeah and you know i at that point had gone through so many different it was like i read your website and i knew that you had a lot of healing with the emotional and the like, spiritual and like mental healing and all of that even if the physical didn't help that's a net positive that i knew was going to be beneficial no matter what and so it wasn't like nothing good was going to come out of it no matter what and what it was I didn't wasn't sure so when when we started working together were you still I'm trying to remember were you still seeing a couple specialists because the pain or the burning was a, a as a newer symptom for you mm -hmm. um, were you still seeing specialists did you feel like you still had to rule stuff out or when you discovered the mind-body connection and started working with me was it a pretty clean cut for you um, by the time I I came to see you, I was like right in the heel of stopping to see specialists. I think with um, the last specialist I saw was like right before you, and that was um, a hard hard appointment to be at because I remember it was one that pretty much told me that I couldn't eat a lot of foods, and I was really restricted on like my diet, and I believed that food was causing me pain and. I was um, living off of like cashews and pear juice, like starving. And so um, I, by meeting you was right after that. And at that point I was like done with like, I still had a medical doctor that guided me, but I was 
done seeing all the specialists I could see. Yeah. I'm remembering now you could barely eat anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I love that you're sharing this because there are so many people that, that get where you are. Um, do you have any advice for people who are wondering if, if food is, is, is the cause of their symptoms or um, all the elimination diets, any thoughts on all that for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, well, in that doctor's office, it was, I think there's obviously benefit to it. So I'm not, there are things that need medical attention, but for, yeah. for me that it was, um, I was in such a vulnerable, vulnerable state because I was in such pain that I went to the experts for this advice. And, you know, I just learned that you have to like, your mind is so powerful and whatever people speak on you or towards you, you kind of have to like, and it's hard when you're in that vulnerable state because they're the experts that you have to kind of, um, know what's best for you and with the food stuff i think that there is hope because i they I mean they still had me eat foods and so there wasn't like oh you you're gonna die from eating these foods it's just that we need to build your tolerance up and so it was like a, a new relationship i had to like learn with food to be okay with and i think there's hope in that it's not um mm. it's a process and you know that the food wasn't my pain, but I thought it was. And I think that, you know, yeah. doing your own research and like, you know, really knowing what's best for you is like what helped me. Cause I then found out it's not that, you know, and I'm okay with it, but you know, everybody has to come to their own like revelations of like what's best for them or like if the food is actually doing that or not. But for me, I found that uh, it was, it didn't make sense. It didn't add up to what they were telling me. And that's, I think what it, it came down to, I would keep on this track of eating certain foods and I would still feel pain. Right. Um, and, and the doctor in that, in that sense, he did diagnose me with, uh, I believe it was mass, um, cell syndrome. Okay. okay. Um, which, which was hard to hear. Cause he pretty much was like, um, you have this, um, we don't know much about it um don't google it and there's no cure and here's three prescriptions oh. that he didn't even really tell me what what they were and just sent me on my way and um it just like the world you know your world just kind of gets a little smaller when you get news like that and yep. um, you don't know where to go from there and, and and stuff so um that was hard to kind of like work through but then i had met you right after that and so I think the tools that you gave me to kind of cope and kind of move past that, um, helped obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we started working together and, um, it's been a year now. Um, and, um, it, it, it took, it took a while, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, what was that? What was that like for you? I guess it's been longer than a year, like a year and a half or something, um, since we started, um, what, what has that journey been like of healing for you? Um, was it quick and easy and boom, we're good. Um, and, and I just want you to answer that question, honestly, because we all have such mm -hmm. um, different journeys that take uh, different amounts of time. So what it was like for you? Um, you know, I think it, it was a process a lot longer than I anticipated. And I think that and it was up and down too. So it wasn't necessarily like a, a linear line. It was all over the place. And I think that just like embracing the like that and knowing that there is hope at the end of it. And I remember, you know, listening to, to people's stories and being like, wow, like they're already there. Like there's hope there to get there. And, um, but I wasn't there yet, but listening to other people's like testimonies kind of, I would listen to podcasts and go and just walk on the treadmill and like, you know, kind of, you know, take that in. Um, but I do remember that I, like I said, I knew God my whole life, but I didn't really understand how to speak to God. And I didn't understand how to like hear from him. And, you know, I could go back in my life and find like moments and go, that for sure was a God moment. But this whole process helped me to 
have a, a communication and a, a way to talk to God and hear from him. And, and then he would give me certain words that like I would hold on to and find strength to get through. And that I think was like, you know, each little bit he would kind of help me through. And I remember like the hardest thing is like, I understood the assignments they would give me and like the, the working through the different emotional or like spiritual things I needed to, but the pain would still come and it would be very frustrating and just like kind of disappointing. And like, I've done all this work. How am I still having pain? But I just remember like sitting down and listening and God telling me like soon, soon you will forget the pain. And then, then soon you will forget to anticipate the pain. And I think that that's a hard thing too in your journey is like you find these like little glimpses of hope that you don't have pain, that the pain isn't quite all the way gone. And so then you find yourself anticipating the next time you're going to have pain. And so like he told me those words, soon you will forget and soon you will forget to anticipate. And so when I would have like a rough patch, I would just remember that truth that he gave me. Um. So what were, it sounds like, I think you're talking about writing. Is that is that right? Was that through writing that you would hear from the from God words from God, or was that um, prayer life, or what did that? Where'd you where'd you get those words from? Um, this this uh, the psalm it out. I think helped uh, um, understand and unlock a lot of things that um, that whole format was like life changing. The psalming it out and writing it and digging deep and you know getting into like emotions that you're like, oh, dang, that's not pretty. And I didn't know it was going to get there. And, and then like letting, I think every time I had got to the part where it was like the new truth or a new way of thinking, I would write on the top of my page, like, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere and inviting God into like, he was going to write these words back to me. And it's, you know, I can't even like, ex- like, I try to explain it, but like, it got like parts where it wasn't like, pretty and I'd be like I really don't know what you could say God to actually make this better in any way and I would like get to that part and I would never even guess that what he told me would like actually bring me complete peace and healing and that's how I knew it was from God because I couldn't even fathom the answer that he would give me in the writing and stuff like that and then also understanding like I think you always would tell me to write down like this is restoring my nervous system and this is like you know, healing that. And, you know, so that helped and meditating, I think the curable app and a lot of things that you put me through with that kind of helped me give me some like understanding of like feeling the, like what was coming in through the emotions and how to like, um, to deal with that. So those two things really helped me kind of hear from God. Yeah. Yep. And, and she, um, mentioned the psalm it out which is a type of writing assignment that i that i use that i wrote for my clients um and um i've talked about this before on this show but just to recap um in this mind body community we talk a lot about feeling our feelings and getting it all out whether it's on paper or just expressing it um but i also think that it is very important to hear and listen and leave space for the Lord to redeem some of those thoughts and emotions. Mm-hmm. And that's what Ashley's talking about. Um, and I, so I resonate completely with what you're saying. I, um, I, it's just so powerful to hear those words of whatever they are, safety or love or value, or, um, mm-hmm. he, he meets us where we are. And that's, um, the, the beautiful yeah. part of this journey. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like a special like he only he knows us so well and he knows what makes us cause this pain in our bodies and he knows the exact answer and my answer is completely different than what would heal you and it's just like just a testament like how personal our god is and how well he knows us and um it's beautiful yeah it is and um it it still is just unfathomable to me how um, how healing the journey of, of writing for me was. And it mm-hmm. sounds like for you too, of just learning so much about my God and how amazing and loving that he is. And so I love sharing that, that story yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I try, I'm such an advocate for journaling now. Every time I'm in like my women's group or something, I'm like, did you journal it? Do you want to know about journaling? Let me show you, like, let me, let me tell you about this. And it's just, it was such a I don't know. It's such a gift that I, it's hard to keep that in. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of the questions I was going to, was going to ask you was 
what what was one of the hardest parts of overcoming? And maybe you already answered that. Maybe you have a secondary answer, but it sounds like expectation or what's the mm-hmm. word you used? Um, predicting, uh, what was the word you used? Mm-hmm. Uh, expecting the pain to come. Yeah, um, anticipation. Anticipation, yeah. yeah. Um, besides that, or would you say that was the hardest thing to overcome? Like some people, it's, you know, the, the actual... Um, uh, feeling their emotions is difficult or sitting down to write, um, uh, not being afraid of their symptoms. What, what would you say were the the hardest parts for you? It def- I mean, like it's the, the, the symptoms and the sensations, I think was the hardest part to get past. And, and, um, cause I, I, I understood the, the assignments when it came down to emotion and it kind of like revealed stuff. And I was like, Ooh, this is Let's keep doing this like um but I, I i found that like when i would do those assignments like the, the pain would just like melt away and so i think that's what motivated me a lot obviously to for healing but i could you can physically feel the pain go away when you work through those emotions and in, in writing and stuff and so it was definitely i <laughs> did not I don't enjoy the physical pain that I was in and those sensations and so anything I could to like stop that and um it just I you know I it, and it caused fear that oh when are these going to pop up in my life again like I just want to go enjoy this or watch a, a, a basketball game without fearing fear or go to a concert without or just live my life without like this uncomfortable pain and I think that was the hardest part like trying to get past that like um you won't always live like that, but in the moments it doesn't feel like that. So that was hard to like, like I said, to get through. And um, those truths that God kind of gives me, kind of gave me the strength and confidence to get through it. I love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So one of the other questions I had was your top three tools, but you you have said um, solving it out. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, you just told me what was the second one that you liked using. Well, let's just go to this. What were your f- three favorites? So, saw me it out. What else? Uh, what else was really powerful for you? Like pain talks, like talking to your pain. Um, those those are interesting. Um, I think the ones that really helped me is obviously the saw out and journaling, and then the like the the mantras. I think that pri- previous to this, I've always been intrigued and in, like, oh, you can like you know speak over yourself and like the mantras and like. Yeah. And I always tried doing that, but it never worked. And then going through this, realizing that like you, there has to be some kind of truth that's tied to those mantras for them to actually yeah. form and, and, and not really just like, oh, I want to be confident because that's what and I want to be confident today. Like, where does that come from? And like coming up with those phrases, like, you know, your body was um, created to heal and everything's going to be okay. And you're, you know, just like, um, but a truly understanding that in a way that's not like I'm just saying words I'm like actually believing them and so that I think is powerful because I remember standing in front of the mirror and like having a bunch of them and even going through like the Bible and like telling seeing what God tells about me like I am chosen I am like redeemed I am like a child of God and like taking those truths straight from the Bible and like speaking to myself like literally taking a timer for like five minutes and saying it to myself and like letting it sink in and like that was like um truly helpful um and then the breathing i don't know if like we did breathing with you or if it was through the curable app but i think breathing itself like the way it calms my nervous system even today like if i find myself in like a way like being able to like calm my nervous system that that is the so those i mean all of it was very helpful but those three i think are what really helped me get through yeah and i still to this day do i do breathing less as like a a 10 minute exercise and more of just like, okay, I can tell that my nervous system mm-hmm. is a little ramped right now. I'm going to do some deep breathing and just take 20 seconds to do that. And, and journaling is of course, and always going to be a tool of, yep. of this work. Um, I just don't want to blow past everything you just said about standing in front of the mirror. And, and I, I just feel like you were preaching the identity that God has given you over you. Mm-hmm. Um, and claiming it to be true. Um, and it's, it's just so, it's just so powerful. Sometimes I want to say that this entire healing journey is just identity work. It's Mm -hmm. just, who are you in Christ and who does God say that you, that you are instead of these 
fear cycles that we end up in because of this broken world that we mm-hmm. live in and sure. the pain that we go through. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you have any words of encouragement on, on that end of things for people? I'm um, just like, I, I know that we have pain. We come from places where we carry emotional pain from our past. And, mm-hmm. um, it sounds like God has just done a great work in you and, um, any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah. I think that the, you're coming down to like, you have more control than what you think in all of this. And your brain is more powerful than what you think and what you shape your reality to be is what you're going to, your body's going to feel. And I just, um, mm-hmm. find that like, you know, I live my life probably a lot, like, based off of what the emotions and I now I'm and you know I'm not I'm still like working through stuff but trying to figure that I have a choice in how I want to identify or I have a choice to like how I want to react to this or I have a choice to speak these words over in my life or I and I have a good father who wants to help me with that so when I don't quite understand exactly where I'm at then he can like speak the truth for me and like help me he knows me better than I do and you know so it's like understanding I have a choice and I have con- more control than I think that I do and in, and in, in all of this and I'm not just here to um you know it's like take every thought captive you know as a verse that kind of like yeah and, like all of this um work is really you know tied to like how God designed us and, and he puts it in the bible right like take every thought captive and it's like yeah I, I read that verse multiple times but like understanding what that actually means um, to actually do and how that affects your nervous system and everything. If you don't take those thoughts captive then the strongholds and the lies that the world or the devil will sneak in and all of a sudden that becomes a, a truth and like that you oh. think it's true. And then you live your life out of that fear and, and it takes time to like, and, and this world's not perfect too. So certain situations will happen and you will perceive it a different way. And then you, you, that becomes another truth that you're now you're living out of like this, like constant conflict of how God created you to be with like this, like, this is how I think this life is like, and how I should be. And then like, what your body's like, no, this is, this is how you're supposed to live your life. You're supposed to live life for this way. So it's like this constant battle inside of you that you're trying to like get. And so um, that's how I felt. I felt like there was this constant struggle inside of me of like who God created me to be and the truth and like, and then like the, all the lies that I, I took in as strongholds in my life. I, I, I'm, yeah, that was beautiful. That was so beautiful. Um, makes me want to cry. Like, yes, when those lies become truth and then you're living in conflict between who, you know, you're meant to be. And yet you're living in this, these traps that we're mm-hmm. stuck in. Um, and just the power of the gospel and truth over us. And when we get to live in alignment. So I am so thankful that, that the Lord was like, he just showed up for you and, and gave you truth over it that you got to speak and choose to take as truth over your life. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, did you, I don't even want to move past that, but um, <laughs> did you, um, did you have any personality traits that are like one of my favorite things to talk about? So yeah. I, I love to just ask the question, did, did you have any um, predominant personality traits? I'm, I'm actually hearing people call, call them um, strategies now instead of personality mm-hmm. traits, but, but yeah, like perfectionism, people pleasing, urgency, Were, was that... Um, a part of your healing journey is looking at that. Oh, definitely. I think the laundry list of them all, um, perfectionism and people pleasing and, um, God just stepped right in and was like, let me, let me tell you a little something. And, and, and it healed me from a lot of it. I mean, I'm still, you know, a lot of this is like a lot of prep work. Um, and I've done a lot of work, but there's still things I haven't actually, um, situations I've come across in life where I've actually had to act out on these like things that I've learned and so it's like I'm prep prepared for certain things but sometimes I may not have actually gotten to that point where I'm actually tested on it and so um so I I mm-hmm. um one thing I know people pleasing and this one was kind of like a 
yeah, I can give this example that God kind of like was so gentle with me and, and it doesn't, uh, he kind of talked to me in this, in the psalming it out that like, um, you just need to like find what Ashley authentically likes. And the word authentic was just a word that was so new to me. And I honestly thought it was like, I, with the word authentic, I was like, oh, God's so authentic. I'm so thankful for him. But he was actually telling me, I want you to like, I want you to find what's authentic to Ashley. And and I didn't even understand that. And I, I think the fear, there was another fear on top of that is like, I was so fearful that people would find out that I actually didn't really like love myself. And it was like, I didn't even know I did. And like, I cared for Ashley in a way that like, I want her to be happy and I want to provide for her and I want her good things. But like, it revealed to me that like, if Ashley was standing in front of me as like a family member or a friend, I didn't have the same admiration or love towards Ashley as I did that, that person. And, and so I was like, well, that, that kind of sucks, but like, how do we get past that? And so God was like, I want you to treat Ashley like you treat your neighbor or how you treat someone you love. And I was like, okay okay and i sat there a little bit longer and i was like so god can you like give me some examples about that <laughs> like help yeah. help help me out and he's he was so kind and he was like i want you to go through the bible and i want you to find every verse that i tell you how to treat others and i want you to put your name in that verse mm-hmm. and speak that over yourself like be kind to ashley speak graciously over ashley treat her with like you know all the verses and i have them like all written out with my name and it was just so like you know you talk about self-love and stuff like that, but it's just, it hits different when God reveals it to you in a different way. And um, yeah, so um, that was my journey or an example of like, okay, I don't have to people please, what does Ashley want? And then once I figured out that, oh, I'd love Ashley like that, I can like respect her and like, what does she want in a situation? What is like her emotions need in this? Like, is she okay with doing whatever, you know? And so it kind of like, brought that to life instead of like just taking everything else on. Yeah. I am thankful that we're talking about this and, and even that you mentioned that, that the Lord brought you there because that, that piece of, of his grace and gentleness and kindness and, and he, he treats us that way. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and yet we often um, don't think that that means that we get to treat ourselves that way. And Mm -hmm. Uh, and the amount of lack of boundaries and the, the impatience of that we treat ourselves with and mm-hmm. that not even caring what we should or, or is beyond our load. Um, the pressure, the, the pressure we put on ourselves, uh, mm-hmm. is, is often a big part of this, this pain cycle. Um, yeah. and again, just thankful that the Lord just brought you to that. And I love the idea of you putting your name in those verses and, mm-hmm. and seeing yourself to, as loved and and free to um, mm-hmm. treat yourself in the same way that he's treating you. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. Um, okay. So um, what do you, do? what would you what would you want to share with, let's just say people who are watching, who are still in, in the throes of the ups and downs, um, what words of encouragement do you, do you have for them and, or, um, any more thoughts about your healing journey in general that you feel like would be helpful for other people to hear? Um, just that it's, it's not over. You know, I think that, um, there's hope. And I think that just continue to like, um, lean into God because he will give you those specific truths that will give you strength to get through. Um, so Mm. not everything that I go through is going to cause me pain that causes you pain or causes another person. Not everything that God tells me or tells you is going to, um, heal me. And he gives each of us specific words and that will like, literally melt away the pain right and so i mean it's your you've experienced too like just find a way to like talk to god and ask him bring these issues or whatever you come across and he will he will heal you and um just continue it's gonna be you know i mean i still like 
it's a journey. It's a, like, I think you told me one time, it's the human condition that we live in and it's never going to be perfect. And it's like, uh, um, and accepting that in this life, it's not going to be perfect and we're going to keep going through it, but it's going to get better. And God is, and the truth that he gave me is like, he's a good father. He, he loves me more in one moment than anybody could in a lifetime. Like to even like fathom that, like, how could he not bring you through what you're going through and just like continue to lean into him and find the truth that he wants to heal you because he's good to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We often talk about leaning into the symptom in this world or in this mind body world, but yep. you're talking about leaning into God, into this space. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah. Um, um, how, just one more question. And then I know you have a question for me, um, but um, how do you, how do you see the world differently? How do you operate within the world differently than, um, than before this journey when, when everything felt dangerous? Um, and I don't know, what have you found different between before, how do you live your life differently from before and now in kind of this practical way, we talked a lot about like identity and mm -hmm. how you're operating, but, um, uh, sometimes symptoms imprison us and they make our life smaller and we see life in a certain way. And I'm just curious what, what this work has done for you in that area. Um, yeah, I think it's healed, like it's healed me when the current with like the physical symptoms, but it's also like gone back and healed me with past things that has changed my, my posture of how I just like can function in the world. And so, um, you know, I just, I think I have a lot more um, understanding that this world's not going to be perfect and it's okay, Grace, and like with that and kind of like, um, and then with situations, like again, like I said, I think I found in this journey that I have more control than I thought and um, I can like shape that and I just realize how powerful our brains are and um, just looking at the world, it, it may, I mean, it's just like putting it on like a different lens and you kind of like see everything a little bit differently and you see, you see this like mind body in the world and other people. And so it's like, um, living out of a, a assurance of like, okay, I know what I'm doing here. I know. And like, I am, I'm thankful that I, didn't like going through, but I'm thankful I did because it's brought me to a place where I can see the world a little, or at least where I fit in this world a little bit better um, in a sense that like, I know how to like um, be who God has intended me to be and not live in a, in, a, in a constant state of fear. I think my whole life I kind of made decisions out of fear my whole life and kind of like having freedom. And I think I just live with a little bit more freedom. Yeah. Yep. I can see that, um, moving into a space of freedom. And I, and I, I remember hearing that in your journey too, as, as mm -hmm. you were on the, the journey of healing that the, the Lord was bringing you to more and more freedom. And so that's, mm -hmm. um, very encouraging. Okay. Um, do you have, what questions do you have for me? Just <laughs> since I know you have one. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's kind of similar, I think, to the last one that you just asked me. It's kind of like, how do you see the world differently? How do you, like, when you come across, um, I'm obviously like you see mind body syndromes a little bit different. And when you come across that and people that may not even be seeking that from you, how do you, like, how do you, like, um, I don't know, go about that? And like, kind of just like, I mean, cause it's like, a, it's almost like a gift. Like I was talking before, it's like, you just want to like help and like heal this person and, and like help give the good news of like the truth that God has like healed me in different ways. But how do you, how do you, um, how do you deal with that? I think that the, the way that I deal with that has morphed and changed. Mm -hmm. And, and when I was still, let's just say like, in my healing journey, let's say halfway to three fourths of the way through the, my healing journey. Um, I, I found that I had flare ups every time I would be around somebody that I knew had mind body mm -hmm. symptoms, yeah. um, because I felt 
I felt this excitement that I kind of had to suppress in. And anytime we suppress anything, even if it's excitement, mm-hmm. it shows up in our nervous system. And I also yeah. felt this pressure to save them mm-hmm. um, because I do have, I do have information that would help them. Um, and you know, there's that conflict of like, okay, do, do I, or don't I? And, um, I, I was seeing a, a friend of mine on a regular basis at that time in my life. And I remember always coming home with a flare up and being like, Oh my gosh. Okay. So I wrote a note on the door as at my bedroom door, as I, um, so as I left, it said, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's not my responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity, um, to share this information about mm-hmm. GMS, mind body syndrome. And, um, and, and that opportunity means it's, it's not forced upon me to, sh- to share this every time the door opens or, um, or every time I see a glimpse of TMS, mind body syndrome. Mm-hmm. And so that just kind of took looking at it like an opportunity, first of all, sure. took the pressure off of me. Um, but, um, uh, but I have to say that now I definitely don't bring it up unless the Lord lays it on my heart, unless mm-hmm. there is peace. And and I'm talking about my personal life. Sure. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't push it on people, but I am very open about my journey in it. So mm-hmm. if you are in my life at all, even probably one or two times, because people ask me what I do. And so yeah. it's, you know, like it's going to be my story, but, um, I, I think even if I didn't, if I wasn't a pain coach, I still would talk about this in my sure. own story. Um, some people have a little bit of, um, like timidity about sharing that their pain was TMS, mind body syndrome. And mm-hmm. I'm proud of it. I'm like totally okay <laughs> with that. So, um, yeah. so what I think that that does is allow those people that maybe I'm not telling them, oh, your pain is TMS. They're hearing me talk about it and it's giving them an opportunity to ask questions. Mm. Um, They know that I'm open to talking about it. And, um, and I, and again, if, if the Lord lays it on my heart, I definitely will say like, if you're ever interested in talking about it, um, I would suggest this app. And I also have a website. um, I'm also open to talking about it. Most people are like, nope, you know, they're, they're not interested. And, um, and that I, I, that is difficult because it is a, um, it is a perceived rejection, right? Like they Mm -hmm. don't, they're, I'm offering you a huge gift (laughs) Mm -hmm. and they don't want it. And, and that, that safety in the Lord, it is okay. I am okay. If I am a rejected, I am okay. If they don't want to hear about it, um, this is perceived danger. I'm not in danger. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is kind of a big part of that to answer the second part of your question, or maybe it was the first part I see mind body syndrome everywhere. I mean, I I'm on the pretty extreme end of, I think almost everything is mind body syndrome that's mm-hmm. chronic. Um, and so I, I see the world very differently now, um, than, than before this and, mm-hmm. People aren't ready to hear about it until it's very, very chronic and severe. And yeah. I kind of have to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. I was just, was like, you know, going through it and just interested in like, you're obviously have gone through it and just how, um, what your response was to, to that. So it's, it definitely answered my question and, um, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, before we close, do you have any other, I don't know, words, but anything you else you want to share that's on your heart? Um, not really. I just, um, I just hope that, you know, whoever is listening to this, like God can use it and give you hope and, and, and to get through it because, um, it won't last forever and everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, if you're listening, literally stop and say that to yourself this won't last forever i'm gonna be okay Mm -hmm. it's pretty powerful all right thank you ashley thank you for sharing your story thank you for being vulnerable um 
yeah, including God in your story and just how powerful he was. And it's encouraging to us all. So thank thanks you. for having me. I appreciate yeah. it.